are you guys looking for them? Hey, we don't think you can make a buck off it. Look at all the wagons out there. Yeah. This is our pick. Whoa! It would need $3,000. Well, that's a lot. The box is great. Yeah. The radio's crap. Since you're a low baller, that's Mr. Low Baller to you. Scott, I found the ultimate cigar box for you. <laughs> I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithens. And we're pickers. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between, looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. It's not junk to us. How do you make $2,000 in the antique business? Uh, Start with five. Yeah, I was <laughs> Yikes. Wow. wow. Sheldon and I are very different people. He came up through the auction ranks, where I came up through the collecting ranks. And that's killer, isn't it? I'm looking for things that have stood the test of time. Oh, I love it. I'm not looking for anything that came with a little cardboard box around it. <laughs> that's where all the money is. Come on. Oh, I want that. Yeah! Look at the smile on his face. I don't really care what anyone thinks about whether I'm buying junk or not. Just sell me your junk, then. We spend a ton of time together. The only thing is, is that Sheldon is a terrible, terrible driver. Yeehaw! I want to stop for coffee before we do that pick. I gotta have my wits about me. Hey, let me grab the mount. Let's climb the day. Yeah, I'm hungry too. I wonder if the train's running. This place hasn't changed at all, has it? There you go, guys. Thanks. And we'll head down the cowboy trail. That's a nice yeah. drive, actually. We're heading over towards sort of the mining territory, right? Exactly. Bellevue. Yeah. This is virgin territory. Yeah. yeah. And then as we go a little bit farther east here, we get into more cowboy country, western memorabilia. Nice, too. Yeah. Have a great day. Thank you. And behave Thank you. yourself. I, Thank you. I always do. It's a beautiful morning in southern Alberta. The skies have opened, the sun is shining, and we've got a pick to be had. But I've got some good news for you. What's that? An old family friend, Manny, gave me a call. His parents have now passed away. They're selling the house. He's got some things he wants to sell, including a totem pole. Wow. Yeah? Big one. How big? Too big to put in the house. Seriously? Yeah. Because for every big totem pole, you'll see 500 little totem yeah. poles. To have a chance at a big one, that makes me excited. Not that size matters. <laughs> Not the size. It's how it gets used. <laughs> this is us right here. All right. Oh, there's a totem pole. It's a big one. Yeah, I'm impressed already. As soon as I walked up the driveway, I saw the totem pole. And that's big, it's loud, and it's old. You look at it and you say, wow. How you doing? That seemed to have caught someone's eye. Yeah, well, it's, it's an interesting thing. It, where'd it come from? Uh, it came from around the Banff Corridor. Alberta? So my dad was into the native stuff and... Uh, did he have it made for him or did he just no, find it somewhere? No, he bought it. When I looked at the totem pole, as soon as I came up the driveway, I said, that's a white man totem pole. It looks not so much carved by a native. You normally don't see Indians in headdresses on Indian totem poles. They had animals, they had the spirit world more so than individuals. It was the weirdest totem pole I have ever seen, and it's a little bit naughty. It's interesting how the artist has used the knots. Yeah, I find that quite interesting <laughs> how they use the knots, yeah. yeah. This was out at their country home, and then when that country home was sold, um, it brought it here and put it into concrete. Canadians love totem poles. Native people like them, non-native people like them. Collectors like them, decorators like them. I love totem poles. What's it gonna take for us to walk home with a totem pole here today? Well, um, I was yes, thinking in somewhere 750, 800, somewhere in the 750 range. 
Is that so pretty strong? Like, well, that's, that's pretty strong. Pretty Scott. steep. I know Scott really wants that totem pole. I mean, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where if it's a native one, that might not be a bad mm -hmm. deal. But I, I just that's, got my doubts. So I can see would, 350, 400. Something yeah, I was like going to say 400 too. Would you consider that? I really want it, but I want to get it for a good price. Well, like the way I'm looking at it is if, if I don't sell it, then it's going to have to go with the house, and I'd rather sell it. If I got a guy in mind for it, and I think he's really going to want that totem pole. So four and a quarter, and you guys could haul it away right now. So we're not leaving without that if I have anything to say about it. Yeah, four and a quarter? Four and a quarter. OK. All right, I want the top it's half if it breaks in half. Let's, right. let's wriggle it a little more. <laughs> There we go. Keep going. There we go. Keep going. Oh, man. I think we got her. <laughs> She's out. She's out. I yeah. think I ripped my shirt. No. Yeah. She's coming in. There we go. Well, that's the gamble of the day. I didn't buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. I bought a totem pool. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. Close All the door right. on this pit. All right. On to the next one. I'm driving. Now we've got one of the toughest challenges you'll ever have as a picker, and that's trying to pick from a collector, because they love their stuff. Doran's notorious around these parts for having a ton of stuff, a ton of carriages, Western gear, saddles. I hear he's even got a stagecoach. Doran could be our kind of guy. I don't know about you, but I'm pumped. Oh, yeah, look at all the wagons out there. Yeah. This is our pick. I was a little concerned when I rolled up and saw all the stuff. That does not speak to me as somebody that's a seller. OK, here we are. The biggest challenge with dealing with people that are collectors is they almost always buy at a higher price. They don't like to sell, and when they do, they want top dollar for everything they sell. I'm Sheldon. Doran, this is my wife, Tara. Hi, Hi. Tara. How are you doing? So do people see you from the highway? Oh, yes, we get a few coming in saying, and just wondered if you had a wagon wheel for sale. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you say? No, no. <laughs> she always says that my funeral's going to be at 11 and the auction will be at 2. <laughs> so I might as well take you where it all began. <laughs> my mom was kind of a collector, you know. She never threw anything away. Maybe it gets in your blood that way. I'm not sure. It's certainly gotten in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> There's 385 tons of wagon stuff in here. All my parts are numbered. I know where everything is. Is that right? So do people bring these to you, or do you I go, get you go on for them? bringing them to me. I was kind of a bad boy for a while. There wasn't an auction sale that I wasn't scanning and looking for wagon parts. And, and now I look at it and say, why did I do all of this? <laughs> Let's see in some of the other collections. Whoa. When he opened the doors to those carriages. Wow, that looks like an old stagecoach. Yeehaw. I immediately fixated on the old West style carriage. That I love. <laughs> wow, this is great. You always want to be the driver, right, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you about the hearse. So we've used this for quite a few funerals. And we used it for my father. And this is the nicest riding vehicle we have, which makes no sense. Like, folks <laughs> it's, are... it's the final <laughs> ride. It might as yeah, well be a good I, one. I mean, it's, well, it's not quite for sale yet, but. Well, I'm not ready to go in it either. <laughs> We're here to pick. We want to find some stuff we can buy and sell. Come on in. I've always loved anything that has anything to do with advertising. Looking for stuff with really interesting graphics and optics on it. What about um, the axle grease tin? Well, they've got that nice carriage wheel. They've got little Art Nouveau borders around them. Well, give me a sense as to what you'd like. Um, well, let's walk. OK. This one you wouldn't part with? Um, no. Nice gauntlets. Yeah. Would you part with them? Uh, and this looks like an axe. You know what? It's got a good look to it. Well. What would you want to get out of that one? Um, that's interesting. <laughs> that's yeah. deer hooves. Yeah. Give us a price. Um, what is it? It's a hide scraper, and I, it's not for sale. Okay. Sorry. Doran's a great guy, but he's just not ready to sell. 
And what would you want for that? Well, you know, that's a royal crown. <laughs> <laughs> How about a bottle of Crown Royal? <laughs> well, that'd start for lubricating me to make a deal. <laughs> I had this in mint condition. Yeah, and it's 400 bucks. Yeah. As it is, it's five. Um. <laughs> <laughs> if Doran wants to sell it? No. For five bucks, I'll leave it hanging on the wall. I figured you'd say that. <laughs> now, there's probably a lot of people that said, why didn't he sell that? What would you want for the ladies in mint size? Oh. You can't be thinking that hard about it. I mean, they are just, <laughs> they are just signs The first thing I have to think about is parting with it. The second oh, okay. thing I think ah, about is how you're much. You're having a little bit of uh, well, parting difficulties. You guys have to understand that uh, I rarely sell stuff. When you collect that item, you're not thinking about selling it. You're thinking about keeping it. And I'm not sure when that time kicks in where it's now time to start parting with all this stuff. Let's get her going. Yeah. Let's initiate it. And, uh, um, you don't have a problem with that, do you? Not a problem at all. I know where the bathroom is. But my wife suggests it needs to be soon. Five bucks each is what I'd <laughs> offer on Deal. All right. Well, we got to start the day somewhere. OK. There we go. There we go. That's the hardest part is getting the start. Yeah. More than anything else, I bought those signs just to get them going. What about the transit case there? That's kind of neat. Is the transit in it? No. It's fitted to hold the transit. So uh, those guys you see doing the uh, leveling at the side of the road, that's the specialty box that would hold the scientific instrument inside. We'll leave you the contents. OK. It's a package deal. <laughs> well, Tara was a real benefit to us because Tara is the one that in the background has given him the eye signals that says, move it along. Because otherwise, I don't think he'd move anything. Hit us with your best shot, Dorn. Oh, the bottom's a little rough on it. Yep, well, I've handled transit boxes before. Stripped down, they look pretty good. Nice oil job. Not going to get rich on that. Five bucks. Done. Well, let's keep the ball rolling. Or interested in selling it? Sure. Five bucks, you got a deal? Five bucks, we have a deal. Perfect. What's the story going on the little Indian head? What would you want for that? You tell me what oh. you <laughs> but Do you want me to be buyer and seller? <laughs> Cast aluminum. It, obviously, it's screwed onto the side of something, but what is the question? Yeah, good question. That's what I've always been trying to figure out. But it is a neat thing. It looked good on a wall. What well, would you want for something like that? Oh, probably 60 bucks. Oh! <laughs> uh, I, I, I was going to say 20. Oh, OK, well. You can come back to my funeral auction. <laughs> <laughs> From my perspective, he just wanted too much for that Indian head. Would you say 30? No. He's hard. Yeah. But the problem for me was I liked it. So where are we going? We got a little room to move. Well, what if I move down to 50? Scott spotted that branding iron. I didn't see this the first time. Hey, it's got an <laughs> S in it. And that's our logo. We'll just strike it twice. Bingo. What are you looking for on this? Well, that's pretty special initial. <laughs> it wasn't until it wasn't until a couple of minutes ago. How about tell you what? 55 for the pair. Done deal. Perfect. All right. OK. Thanks a lot. Just when we thought we saw it all. This is my tack shed here. I've accumulated some leather goods. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, have you ever? First thing you see when you walk in that tack shed is all that stuff. This is just kind of everything and anything. I've got an old timer Great West. This is a one that is really comfortable. A guy can do a lot of miles on that. That saddle was unbelievable. You don't see Northwest Territories saddles very often for Alberta. Great maker, Great West Saddlery. You just don't find the old high backs. It had been reconditioned a little bit. With the original tools, though, which is great. Yeah, the fantastic. Is that something that you'd be interested in moving? I would part with it, but it would take some. Crown Royal? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shares in the company. So what are you talking? Well, a saddle like that, uh, if I was to say goodbye to that today, it would need $3,000. Well, 
Well, that's a lot. <laughs> I'll give you that much. Yeah. Well, the problem for us is, Doran, it's just, it's that that's a good price on it if you're a collector, but for us to make some money on it. You know it's here. Now, I noticed over there you've got a bridle. Now that I know them a little bit, I'm looking for things that, that aren't up front, things that are sort of in a box or hidden behind, because then that tells me he's maybe not that attached to it. There's three of them with the pimpy ones. The pimpy ones. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a, a ballpark Price. You want to do a package deal? Package deal. Oh, this has got a dog. <laughs> Man, Doran, you got too much time. Oh, this has got a deer. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 125? 100 bucks, you got a deal. Well, okay, I'm gonna. We'll do that. You visited the tack room. There you go. Hey, Doran, what about that boot jack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use it. Make me an offer. How's 30 bucks? Sold. Done. Well, I'll be taking my boots off with that boot jack, and uh, I'll think of Scott and Doran and Tara every time I do. We'll see if we can find you some other goodies. Would that be up for grabs? That's my Dempster horse. You know what those are? The weights off of the old Dempster windmills. Oh, yeah. And they made horses, they made a rooster. So where would they date from? Oh, 1920s or earlier. So there's not a lot of those around. They did become windmill targets. You can see the bullet hole in through the, <laughs> look at the bullet holes. <laughs> see, they put rocks in those for weight, eh? Then if they hit the horse with a high-powered rifle, it would just shatter it. So what would you want for that? Uh, those are pretty collectible. It's uh, Canadiana history, or well, actually prairie history. Hmm. I'd have to have four and a half. That's a tempting thing. It's a, it's a great looking thing. That is a good one, isn't it? That seems a bit steep. See, I could do 300 on it. Why don't we go to that's an original cast iron dempster, bullet holes. <laughs> Do three, and, three and a half. Three and a half? <laughs> three and a half done. Okay. okay, that's another deal. We did get some stuff, and if it hadn't been for that horse, I would have been a little disappointed, but that sort of helped me make this pick worthwhile. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been entertaining. You know, it's a tough call what we're gonna get for it. I think, though, that it's a quality item. Perfect, and I'll get another one from here just so we can get the size of it. I think we'll find a buyer for that. We'll have to do some phone calls, maybe see if we can get it appraised. Perfect. That'll do her, let's load her up. What about a hood ornament? <laughs> Pop it on top of the box here. Hey, Sheldon. Should have checked that a little closer. There's not much left of the bottom of that box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you expect for five bucks, Scott? <laughs> I think I almost paid five bucks for coffee this morning, so I can't go too far wrong. So this has been real fun. The time with so Sheldon and Scott, they wanted to wander through buildings and rummage through boxes. It's like quality time. Here we go. That's one of the best private collections I've encountered for a long time. And that was worth seeing and making the stop and the trip just to see that. See you later. We've got another pick to go to, so we've got some room in the truck. It's getting a little confusing here. You're the navigator. Doran suggested we stop in and see Elaine. He's got really cool 50s things and some radios. It's always my hope to find a beautiful radio in somebody's possession. We've only got a bit of time to deal with Elaine because he's shutting down, the, the light's going. So this is gonna be a speed pick. Whoa, whoa, Scott, bubble. Scott, easy, buddy. Just navigate, don't talk. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about is that horse, because if it tipped over and hit hard, we might lose our biggest investment there. <laughs> the only problem with what Doran told us about Elaine is Elaine's a picker. 
I have this church here, and I figure, well, I can use it for my storage for now, for my picking. And you never have enough room. It's just uh, one of those things. Yeah, it's tough to pick from a collector. It's really tough to pick from a picker. I'm thinking it's not church rate. Right? What used to be a church. Oh, here. Well, let's see what we can get. Hi, guys. How are you? I've been waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> So the place is a bit of a mess. Hey, we like it messy. Wow, there's some old stuff in here. I've been a picker all my life. What I collect the most is antique building material. It's from Alberta. Wow. I love taking apart old farmhouse for the lumber, for the molding, the baseboard, the doors, fireplace, mantles. Scott knows what he's looking for. He's a pro. He knows his radios. And if there's a good one to be had, he'll find it. Oh, man, I'd like to buy something. Well, that's why I'm looking quickly here. We, we don't have much time. What are you guys looking for, though? Oh, you know, hey, we don't think you can make a buck off of. There is a technique that when we go in to buy, we don't necessarily zero in and tip our hand that a certain item is the primo item of the whole sale. Strategically, I didn't express too much interest in those radios, but I didn't want one of the better things to be the first deal. There are cowboy boot lamps. Look at that Calgary Stampede wallpaper. Never seen that before. I'm guessing this paper is 50s, 40s? Yeah, 40s, it looks like to me. Huh, fantastic. That's a pity. There's more stuff over here, eh? Well, let's look. Holy smokes, there's some light fixtures in here. Let me just peek around the corner here. That's a great lamp base. Elaine, what would you need for that? 20. 20 bucks? Yeah. Sold. Your partner bought something. Yeah. He did. I broke the ice. <laughs> is the van empty? Uh, th that would be telling. You'd love to fill our van up, wouldn't you? Elaine is just like us. He likes history. He'll buy and sell anything and turn it over at a profit. If he's got a good thing, he wants a good dollar for it. What are you looking to get out of the box of tins? Why don't you make me an offer for the whole box? I would go 20 on the three. Come on, that's too low. Look at this peanut one. You see, it's the boring one, though, right? It... You guys are low-balling me. <laughs> What do you expect? We're trying to make some money on it. He's starting high, and I'm lowballing him every time. And then he gives me this look like he's just offended by my offer. It's the dance you have to do sometimes. So I'm going to look around and see what else you got. Uh, let's see. That's an old store tin, but unfortunately, it's really rough. This would be from the 1920s or so, probably, this tin. So what would you want for that tin in that condition? OK. Uh... Since you're a low baller. That's Mr. Low Baller to you. <laughs> Mr. Low Baller? Yeah? Yeah. I probably paid 25 for it. You did not. Well, you know, you can't expect to find them always mint, you know? He does the dance just for fun. OK, now, are these radios? No, those are my income tax. Oh, you said you, you said yeah. Scott was, like, looking for stuff that can flip quickly, which is uh, what's OK with me. I do the same. You know Scott's interested in radios. Radios? Yeah. I got about 200 radios. 200? <laughs> Where are they? I got boxes and boxes of them. Yeah, boxes and boxes of them. Like this towel. Oh, I, yeah. I yep. have it more in here. For a while, I was buying any radios. If it was $10, I would buy it. As long as it's got color, plastic, and it looks good on the shelf. Yeah. Hey, Scott, here's a Marconi. It's colorful, and it's Canadian. Yeah, that's a nice one. I love, like that. That's called Beetle. I was pumped when I saw them, and then every box I opened, there was more radios and better radios. The best thing I've ever bought is at a garage sale, and there was a radio. I paid 40 bucks for it. It's probably worth 1400 bucks. You got some neat radios, though, here. So what? you never did give me the price per radio. Well, it's kind of they're all different, right? Why? But, uh, Why are they different? That's hot. That, that's a hot radio. Look at the color on there. It's black. Motorola. Black isn't a color. He's trying to build these things up like they're Fabergé Easter eggs. And I'm trying to beat them down like they're something that was dug out of the ground. They call that beetle. Beetle. Beetle plastic. It's got to go one, two, three, four, five cracks in it. Come on. We both know what they are, and we both know what they're worth, and we're going to get there. How much do you want for these little stand-ups? These one be 50. 15? 50. 50? 5 0. 5 -0. When you're dealing with a guy like Elaine who loves the game as much as he loves the stuff, it's all about sort of just positioning yourself. Look at that. 
I can't sell those for 50 bucks. How much for the little guy? That's the, the colors that people want. That's 40 bucks. I know, but... But you're charging me retail. He's a member of the Pickers Union. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta give a fellow member a, a break. See, you got a lot of radios here that I like. That's another one. But the problem I... is I gotta be able to make money on it. I know. Is this the Old Man River? You're the first person I, I meet that likes this kind of stuff. I love this picture. How's 10? <laughs> because I like you, I'll give it to you for 10. Because, Thanks. you know, you Does really... Does that mean you don't like me? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Look at this baby here. Unfortunately, the, this part of it's toast, right? It's too bad I have a Catalan one here. Do you? Let's find it. I'll wait. <laughs> with rare exception, a Catalan radio is the top of the heap with respect to radios. They start at a couple hundred bucks, and they go up to $25,000, $35,000. Let's find that Catalan, because I don't mind paying a good dollar for a good radio. The Catalan that I have is just a small, it's called a Tom Tom. I want it. There's Tom Thumbs and there's Tom Thumb. The way he's describing it, that's a really expensive radio. You're very persistent. But it's, oh yeah, it's a different Tom Thumb. So what would you want for that one? Because it's not the one I was thinking of. $50. And I'm not going to offer that. <laughs> so, Elaine, what I'd like to do, if I could, is I'd like to grab a bunch of radios, okay. put them aside, show you which ones I want, and make you an offer on them. It's two guys that really know what they're doing, battling it out. Uh, is this one he is going to have to be? I paid 70 for that one. I stepped aside and let them do their thing, but I love watching Scott in action. Play ball! And it's a nice hit into left field. Junk. Oh. Ooh, that's a nice one. Something's missing. Ooh, th this is a hot one. Look at the ding there. Beautiful radio, but broken. He's rounding first and going on. That one time was selling at 10 grand on eBay. Yeah, but that was, that was the TR-55. Yeah. There's a difference. What about that Sony there? No, it's got a big chunk out of the bottom of it. Cool clean up well. <laughs> like, what are you, dreaming? <laughs> He's clean past second base. Unbelievable. Some of these are $10 radios, as you know, like that one. I mean, come on. It's white, it's chipped. These ones are not exactly the most attractive radio you've ever seen. You got to admit that. <clears throat> the one I'm most keen about is that pile here. Well, that's, that's a good radio. It's in the box shape. is great. Yeah. The radio is crap. He's rounding third. It looks like he's going to go for it. Okay, 32 radios. What are we talking? Well, that's going to be hard. It's too much. I haven't said the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and here he comes. Let's talk a ballpark number. I'm trying to make money on yeah, this, yeah, yeah. right? And you're going to be mad at me when I say this, but I'm going to say 400 bucks. 400 bucks? Yeah, I told you you were going to be yeah. mad at me. It's going to take you six months to make more than 400 bucks on these things. Holy cow, I think he's going to make it. I tell you, I'll go 500. Or I'll keep the, these ones and I'll sell it even cheaper. You picked the best one. He's sliding and he's... So, 450, final offer. Sold. It's okay. a home run. Unbelievable. We Ultimately, we hammered him down at 450 which we thought was a really good price, particularly where he started from. Last load. Sun's going down. The sun's going down. <laughs> I'll take that. We had a great time. We shook hands, smiled. It was nice fun doing business. business. Thank Bye, you. guys. That was some speed picking. <laughs> Faster than I like, got to do what you do, right? Yeah. Hopefully, we won't find too many nicks. Hopefully, it won't look like the bottom of your box that you bought today. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just keep reminding me of that one, don't you? <laughs> I know you will when it happens to me. I'm dying to know what those radios are worth. Why don't we give Lauren a call? I've known Lauren for 20 plus years, and Lauren knows pretty much everything there is to know about 50 stuff, retro stuff, and he specializes in radios. I took a couple of pictures. I was pretty sure that we got a good buy on those radios, but I wanted to call Lauren just to make sure. Can you hear me, Lauren? Yes, Did you get those pictures of those radios I sent you? Well, I'm hoping when the dust settles on the radios that we're going to double out on those for sure. There's a bunch of stuff there. Can you give me an idea? That little green marker? Yeah. 
Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow. What about the little Tom Thumb? How's that? That's not a bad little radio and pull. Gotta be worth about a hundred bucks. Beautiful. I'm pretty happy with that. Can you give me an idea, sort of what you think that, that we might be able to get for those radios? I was kind of looking at about maybe about 850, 900 bucks retail for the whole thing. Well, that's pretty good news. Hey, thanks a lot, Lauren. Hey, fantastic. That sure takes the sting out of the $100 uh, gas bill we just encountered. <laughs> We're heading to Bellevue. This area of southern Alberta around the Crow's Nest Pass is famous for its ghost towns. So we're going to see some interesting things, I think, today. We've got a pick to be had. We've been contacted by a lady by the name of Bernie. She's uh, got a local history museum, all sorts of mining things, things from some of the ghost towns around the area. She's moving to the city and wants to sell the whole museum. Do you know if she sold anything off before we got here? Apparently not. I think the museum's pretty much intact the way it's been for 35, 40 years. Wow. This is Bernie. It's got a real local flavor to it, and we're going to go in there and see what interests us and see if we can strike up a deal with Bernie. Hi. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good morning. You? Scott, how Hi, are you? Hi, Scott. Nice to meet you. Hi, Bernie. Hi, Sheldon. Ready to see some antiques? We sure are. We've got quite the collection. My family came here from Italy in 1901. There was nine children in the family, three uncles, grandfathers, and grandmothers, but 95% of the family mined, so we just had a lot of that stuff handed down. Okay, so this used to be our old chicken coop. You watch your step here. The okay, floor that's caved a big in. Drop, that it? is a big drop. And we'll start in this room, probably. Oh, okay. Wow. Now you walk into that first room in the museum, and it hits you. Hard to know where to start. It's just wall-to-wall -wall bottles, beer bottles, pop bottles, stoneware bottles, you name it. We had miners and seamstresses and carpenters in the family, so everybody brought a little bit of everything. Right. So is everything up for grabs, Bernie, or will you? Eventually, the collection will probably all go because I can't move it to where I'm going to relocate. I'd like to sell it to someone that will appreciate it as much as I do. Yeah. Pull some things out that interest us, and away we go. For somebody that wants to, to move as much merchandise as possible, the best way to approach this kind of a pick is to group the merchandise together and try and work on one lump sum. Hopefully the lump is enough to, to close the deal. The seltzer bottle, it's the Lethbridge Brewery. Brewery. Yeah. Hey, Scott, this looks like my last year of high school. Yeah, exactly. Right down to <laughs> right that down guy. To Uncle Ben's, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea where any of this stuff came from? Um, most of the bottles were dug up from underground, either in Lil and Passburg. Yeah, Lil don't exist no more. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It was an old mining town. The mine closed down. The mining company sold off the homes. In fact, Bernie's home is a former house that was moved off site. A lot of this stuff was left underground, and my father and my uncle dug it up. They right. were treasure hunters. They used to go out on weekends and stuff with their little backpacks and their shovels and their picks. There are several ghost towns in this area, former uh, mine sites. And as a collection of ghost towns, it's very unique. And uh, I'm sensing that we're going to find a little bit from each one. It looks like a canteen can to me. Canteens yeah. for the miners. That's a good old one. Canteens are, are kind of interesting because they're usually uh, not a mass-produced item. They're hand-tankered. They're pretty unique. They oh, sure show their age. Lit. This was dug up, I think, because yeah, I think the fused, top's actually fused. Fused right on, on there. Yeah. There are people that... That, that will decorate their house, yes. and they'll just put old, beat-up stuff yeah. like that. Are those cans? Those are bocce balls. Oh, bocce balls. Like an old, old bocce yeah. ball. From the old country. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did I go with my cowboy hat? I think you need those on the road, Scott. This is a good mining helmet. Do you know whose hat this was? That was probably uh, a great uncle's. Yeah. Let's see if that works for you. If we put a little light on it for the next pick. Well, we can always fall back on mining. Because <laughs> this picking thing sometimes is more difficult than you think. <laughs> this is my other room. I love the photos. Lots of photos. There's a photograph of Frank's slide before it fell there. Oh, here's Turtle Mountain before the slide.
part with that? No, I'm hanging on to that. Okay, I can't, oh. <laughs> can't say I blame you, Bernie. You don't see too many photos of that mountain when it's in one piece. She had a couple photos we would like to have, but she wasn't giving them up. Yeah. Is it a sentimental thing, or is it a question of you'd have to get the right price for no, it? No, it's really, really rare. Like, I haven't seen it anywhere around the Crow's Nest Pass, a picture of the Frank slide before it fell. What about the picture of your grandfather? Is that a keeper? Yeah. You? And when you, you see something good, you got to ask, yeah. right? What about this mine here? That was the Mohawk Tipple. The Mohawk Tipple? Yeah, that's the one my uncle worked at, my grandfather worked at. Would you part with that one? Yeah, I have a lot of those. OK, good. It looks like these are dog tags. Yeah, they're dog tags from the miners. The miners. Oh, they're miners' tags. Tags. So when they went in, if they found the bodies and that, they know who was in there. Right. Sadly, this area has a history of mining disasters. Yeah. They used in the mine. They stick it in the uh, walls of the yeah. mine. Oh, right. Can I add that to the? Yeah, you can add that. All right. I love all the pieces of local history. Bernie, what about these old ginger beer bottles? Are they? Yeah, they're up for grabs. This one, you can tell this one's being dug up, right? Yeah. Well, the ginger beer bottles were around early part of the 20th century, and essentially that's what people drank. The interesting part is that because this is a railway town, you're going to find them dug up because people used to ride on the railway. They'd drink their ginger beer bottle at about a half mile out of town. They'd pitch it out the railway car. So you usually find them all in the same place. I think we might have to do something unusual, and that's maybe sell things as a grouping sell the story. So now this is interesting because Lord. the color's great. That's a beauty. The longer a bottle stays in the sun, if it's got some manganese or some metal in it, it will turn color. There's one. Boring, horrible yeah. sealer, but, but it's the turning purple. color so it's is nice. beautiful. It's a gem. Because they were turning color, somebody Chapman's will want those because you can sit them up in a window, the light comes through them, and they look beautiful. Do you know what they're doing now with these things? They're taking regular glass, running it through an MRI, and it turns it purple. Really? That's yeah. Crazy. Huh. But this one would be flint in the glass. Oh, there's no question yeah. that that. Mother Nature did this one. Oh, there's a beaver sealer. That's not a bad one. As we all know, the mm. beaver sealers, they used them to, to pickle products. Right? right. Those beaver sealers are sort of an iconic Canadian sealer. They're all over the place, mm -hmm. and there's millions of them. And most of them are worth very little, but some of them are worth more, and the beaver ones are worth more mm -hmm. because I got the image of the beaver on them. Right. I just wish she had the one that went the other way. Yeah, that makes a big difference to some collectors, uh, which, which way the beaver's facing, and sure enough, the beavers that we found, they're facing the wrong direction. It's always the other way, right? It's always the other way. <laughs> yeah. No matter which one I find, it's always the wrong one. <laughs> now, let's check out that other shed sure. over there. Wow. Hey, watch yourself, Scotty. Bernie, there's two of these. Would you part with them? Sure. Their eyes light up when they found a treasure. It was like a little kid in a toy store. Scott, look at this. I used to play with this exact same. Hey, this is my glove. I got a little connection to the left, which brewing and malting company. I'm sure that's because you drank so much when you were a kid. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Well, if you do, you better let him out. <laughs> <laughs> you love a good graphic, don't you? I do. Whew. Something smells. Yeah. Well, that's picking, Scott. You use all okay. your senses, right? What's the life expectancy of a picker? <laughs> <laughs> it depends if you're picking with me or not. Hey, Scott, I found the ultimate cigar box for you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were talking about personality yeah. or... Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Handmade from long fillers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a keeper. Bernie, I noticed a couple of buffalo skulls. Hopefully, there's no black widows inside these things. <laughs> those were two nice buffalo skulls. And Bertie told us they'd be dug up in the Crow's Nest River not far from here. This part of Alberta, the buffalo migrations uh, used to go right through here. And so it's not unusual to find bones and skulls. But these two were both intact. They showed their age. They were weathered. I think my bison's older than yours, Scott. They used to be plentiful, and now they're scarce. And there's a little bit of market value to yeah. them. So, Bernie, I think uh, Scott and I should probably uh, compare notes and sure. come up with uh, some leave. sort of offer for you. OK, yeah. sounds okay. good. Thanks, Bernie. Please don't leave you guys talk. I'm a little concerned about this pick, because there's a lot of stuff in here that I wouldn't normally take. But she's a nice lady, and I don't really want to 
take a beating on this stuff. I would have normally picked five or six items out and left the rest. But we were trying to put a package deal together because we knew Bernie wanted to move a lot of stuff, and we would get a better deal if we took more stuff. Well, I think what we should do is this. I'm going to go up there, and I'm going to give my scan of it. I'm going to sort of price it up in my head. Hey, I'll you do, do the same. I'll do the same. Then we'll we'll take a couple minutes, talk about it, see how close we are. And if, if our numbers are close, we'll go in and try and do the deal. OK? Yeah. My way of doing it is a little different than Sheldon's, is I look and, and I pick the five or six or 10 best things that I see that I can sell at retail. And if that gets me my money back, the rest is the profit. I'm thinking about what I would allow for each piece. I'm not going to get hurt on each piece and uh, add it up in my mind. And then I usually round it off to the upside, and then we start negotiating from there. Quick sell. Yeah. They're not going to make a lot of money off them, but they're a quick sell. Nothing is really valuable, but priced right should be able to turn it over quickly. So now that we've scoped it out, what's your price? Now you go first. I don't want to go first, because I'm always lower than you. No, you go first. Go on. OK, well, 325 is mine up. Oh, I was going to say 350. Huh. It was generous enough that uh, we weren't insulting Bernie. There's some real treasures in here. And then there's you know, a few bits and pieces that uh, probably don't have a lot of value, no. but they're just they're dangerous. Interest. Yeah. We came up with a, with a number that it worked for both of us. Mm -hmm. And the number was $325 for this bundle here. How, how does that sound for you? That sounds good. How about 350 Oh, <laughs> See, that was a mistake we made. We didn't start low. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think actually that sounds very fair. Absolutely. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK, great. great. It's a deal. OK, Got thanks, ourselves Bernie. a deal. Thanks. And there's probably another three or $400 in there, but it's going to take us a long time to make that. Uh, you got to double your money just to pay for the gas bill and uh, make it make sense. Bernie? It's been a it's pleasure. It's been a pleasure. It was great. <laughs> you take care. You too. I love being here. I love meeting Bernie. Just a lovely person. And you know what? We got some things that we can make some money on. It was a really good day. I'm glad they came. It was nice to see someone appreciate the stuff as much as me. It's been a great day because it's been a long time since I've been in southern Alberta. That was really good. Just the history of it, you know, the, the museum and the chicken coop, all those little ghost towns and bottles. If we could hit a pick like that, right across Canada. That'd be a lot of fun. We may be historians by the end of it. <laughs> Before we get some gas, I'm going to give Jerry a call to see if he can tell us anything about that Dempster windmill weight. Three and a half? Three and a half done. Jerry Frost is a guy that I've known for years. He's probably the most experienced dealer in Alberta on country store collectibles. And I knew he'd be able to find out exactly what it was worth so that we can find out whether we made any money on it or not. What do you think? I think it's wonderful. I, I haven't seen one. That's complete like that. I've only ever seen the horse. I've never seen the, the, the bottom part ever on one. I think it's great. And this one, fortunately, the guy was a bad shot. He never got the horse. Well, the holes always make things interesting, as long as they don't uh, take away from how it looks. When you get into a place like cowboy country, that stuff's way more popular. Now, the, here's the magic question. What's it worth? What's it worth? I, I, I have the feeling, um, Looking at that, I, I figure six, six fifty anyway, Scott, and possibly more, you know, in the, in the right area. Thanks a lot for your help. Hey, take care. Bye. Hey, well, that's all right. <laughs> it was rare, it was desirable, and he even sounded like he might want it. <laughs> do drive slowly. <laughs> what part of a speed limit don't you understand? <laughs> it's precious cargo in the back. But it's early, so I'll cut you a little slack, but uh, okay, well, Jesus, take the wheel then. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs>